Section 2. Dennett's Quality Detectors. As we saw before, Dennett adopts this basic functionalist approach in his denial of qualia. Rather than the term qualia, he prefers the phrase our evolved quality detectors. Their function is, Dennett claims, to alarm or attract us. He says, quote, It is no accident that we and other creatures who can detect them like and dislike colors, smells, tastes, and other sensory qualities. We are the inheritors of evolved quality detectors that are not disinterested reporters, but rather warners and beckoners, sirens in both the fire engine sense and the Homeric sense, end quote. But in the human case, Dennett argues, this straightforward biological signaling system has been turned upside down, both from the inside by culture, influencing our preferences, and from the outside by technology, transforming our natural environment. This may be why we generally fail to see that qualia are, in Dennett's view, nothing but minor and essentially illusory parts of certain biological functions necessary for our survival and well-being. Via culture, these basic alarms and attractions become combined and blended into more sophisticated tastes and aversions. Quote, These native alarmists have subsequently been co-opted in a host of more complicated organizations, built from millions of associations and shaped, in the human case, by thousands of memes. In this way, the brute come-and-get-it appeal of sex and food and the brute run-for-your-life aversion of pain and fear get stirred together in all sorts of piquant combinations. When an organism discovers that it pays to attend to some feature of the world in spite of its built-in aversion to doing that, it must construct some countervailing coalition to keep aversion from winning. The resulting semi-stable tension can then itself become an acquired taste to be sought out under certain conditions. Later in the course, I'll compare this very cumbersome uh, definition with that from what I call energetic learning theory, where qualic experiences can have a real physical effect on the nervous system. As examples, Dennett cites our acquired love of spicy food and enjoyment of discordant music. He starts by quoting Marshall McLuhan's 1962 slogan that the medium is the message a half-truth that is truer perhaps in the nervous system than in any other forum of communication. What we want when we sip a great wine is not indeed the information about its chemical contents. What we want is to be informed about its chemical contents in our favourite way. And our preference is ultimately based on the biases that are still wired into our nervous systems, though their ecological significance may have lapsed eons ago. Dennett uses the profusion of man made colors in our contemporary environment to illustrate the breakdown between function 
and quality detectors, or qualia, as others may might call them. He quotes an observation by the psychologist Nicholas Humphrey, quote, As I look around the room I'm working in, man-made colour shouts back at me from every surface. Books, cushions, a rug on the floor, a coffee cup, a box of staples. Bright blues, reds, yellows, greens. There is as much colour here as in any tropical forest. Yet while almost every colour in the forest would be meaningful, here in my study almost nothing is. Colour anarchy has taken over. End quote. In other words, modern technology has divorced colours from the meanings that they once had for us as we evolved with them in nature. Dennett uses the fact that monkeys don't like red light to illustrate the natural signalling role that colour should play for species like ours. Rhesus monkeys, for example, show a strong preference for the blue-green end of the spectrum and get agitated when they have to endure periods in red environments. Quote, Why should this be? Humphrey points out that red is always used to alert, the ultimate color-coding color. But for that very reason, ambiguous. The red fruit may be good to eat, but the red snake or insect is probably advertising that it is poisonous. So red sends mixed messages. But why does it send an alert message in the first place? Perhaps because it is the strongest available contrast with the ambient background of vegetative green or sea blue. Or, in the case of monkeys, because red light, red to reddish-orange to orange light, is the light of dusk and dawn, the times of day when virtually all the predators of monkeys do their hunting. End quote.